Robert here, and I know in my last video I said I was going to take a few weeks off from YouTube so I can make some updates to my Harmony course. But something happened in a piano lesson I was teaching last week that I loved so much I had to come back and share it. Stick around and I'll show you the rest of those two clips plus a couple of others and talk about how singing songs unlocks creativity for you at the piano whether you're five years old or 105. I've been using singing in the piano lessons I teach for years, and I want to thank my friend Marilyn Lowe for turning me on to this. Marilyn is the author of Music Moves for Piano, and she's a pioneer in the field of piano lessons. So I'll tell you the theory behind this, and then I'll show you the rest of those two clips and you can see for yourself how it works. I think you'll enjoy this whether you're a teacher or a student or if you're just interested in piano. Piano teachers know that when we start explaining music theory, eyes start to glaze over and students tune out. And when that happens, teaching is impossible because sometimes the coolest music is really complicated from a music theory perspective. So what if there's a way to bypass long, boring explanations and instead mainline sophisticated music directly into students' minds and bodies? Well, there is, and the delivery mechanism is songs. I'll give you one example before we get to those videos that I know you want to see. You may or may not be familiar with something called Dorian tonality, or you might have called it Dorian mode. Music that's in Dorian tonality has a distinctive sound. It's not exactly major. It's not exactly minor. It's its own thing. And usually it's something you might talk about in piano lessons once you're several years in. But instead of waiting until five or six years in to explain Dorian tonality to students, I've started singing songs in Dorian tonality, as well as a bunch of other tonalities, from students' first lessons. So what I've found is that by strategically introducing sounds like Dorian tonality early, I'm able to teach them formally much sooner, and students are able to understand it and run with it in unexpected ways. The results of this experiment have been great, but I've never really had a way to show the results until now. Because one good thing about teaching on Zoom during the pandemic is that it's very easy to record lessons to send students to study. And now we have over a year's worth of data points on video to see how students are growing with their piano skills. So now, with this family's permission, I'd like to show you a two-minute video clip from a lesson last July in 2020. And it was a few days before this student's birthday so he was five years old, about to turn six. I'm singing a song called Far From Home, and this is a song I wrote to familiarize students with the sound of Dorian tonality. I didn't expect this student to do anything with the song other than listen. I'm just singing to him, and watch what happens next. First, if you're finding this video informative, please like and subscribe and click the notification bell because those things help me produce this content, which is valuable for anyone interested in learning piano. And now let's watch the clip. Let's see, you know how to sing that song? Wait, what? I totally know how to sing that. Sing it to me. I'll move like seaweed while you sing to me. A word about moving like seaweed. 
The purpose is to model continuous flowing motion because it's through moving with flow that students learn where to place a beat. Next to singing, moving is the most powerful thing you can do to learn piano. And it has the powerful byproduct that it removes inhibitions and self-consciousness and opens people up to learn. Feel free to ignore it for now, or if you're really adventurous, you can try it yourself while we continue. That was beautiful. Wow. So just from hearing him sing this song, a few things are clear. His confidence grows because he took a risk by expressing himself. And he's personally processed a ton of information, including tonal patterns in Dorian tonality and rhythm patterns in triple meter. At this point, he didn't even know the term Dorian tonality because you don't have to know the label to use the sound. Learning the sound first is what makes the label useful later. Now let's fast forward one year. I don't think we sang Far From Home at all in the interim. As far as I was concerned, the seed was planted and we moved on to other things. But listen to what happens. I'm off looking for a book and he starts playing a Russian folk song his big brother was working on. So that surprised me a little bit, but not as much as the thing that happened after that. You'll see the surprise on my face when I realize what he's doing, so it should be clear that I didn't plan this. Also, please ignore the fact that it's only been a year since the last clip that I've clearly aged like 10 years. Anyway, here we go. Okay, let me go get my, um, I have to get the right book. Unit 6 trim. Bum, bum, bum. So this child used his own mind and ears to put two songs together. First was the Russian folk song, followed by the B section of Far From Home, which apparently had been living in his head for a year. And then he ended by repeating the Russian folk song, and the syntax was right on. He even made adjustments to the rhythm of Far From Home so it would make sense with the Russian folk song. And that's not what you usually hear when a seven-year-old piano student creates their own music. Singing prepared him to be creative on the piano. And it blows my mind what piano students are capable of when teachers use songs to plant seeds and give students tools to work with, then sit back and watch to see what students make of it. So then, while I was preparing this video that you're watching now, I came across some new information. I was looking for footage to use for an end screen to this video and I wanted to show the older brother of the student you just saw singing tonal patterns to learn that Russian folk song. So when I was looking for a good clip to use, I heard something interesting in the video that I hadn't even noticed when it actually happened. See if you can hear it. Can I play it? Yes, yes, I can. Of course you can. But read the music information box first. All right. Okay. 
Did you hear that? Let me play that last bit again with the volume turned up. The older brother is singing the B section of Far From Home with the adjustments. And this was actually the day before his little brother played it in the other clip. So I asked the older brother about it. And apparently this mashup is something he came up with last year. And this just confirms for me how when we make a habit of singing songs and piano lessons, cool things happen. The little brother still created that music in the moment. He just wasn't the first person to create it. Just like what happens anytime you hear a performance of a Beethoven sonata or something like that. Only this recreation was made possible not with printed notation, but from singing. So this drives home how singing is the best way musical learning transmits itself. Singing makes it easier for people learning piano to have better outcomes. Singing to students helps them create a listening vocabulary of patterns, which then becomes their performance vocabulary when they sing and take it to the piano. So sing some songs today. If you have any questions about any part of this process, leave them in the comments and I can use that as a topic for a future video. And if you know anybody who might be interested in using songs to enhance their creativity at the piano, please share this video with them. And remember, it's not just singing that enhances piano skills, it's singing songs in a wide variety of meters and tonalities. That's what excites ears and minds and bodies and jump starts the learning process. So I'm gonna end with one more clip I think you'll like. This is the older brother using singing to learn to play the Russian folk song and then picking out a bass line by ear. I have so much gratitude for this family who allowed me to share all these clips and my hope is that you'll find them helpful for your own playing. Before I play that clip, I want you to know about two resources you can use for your own improvement. First is another video on this channel where you can learn how to improvise with tonal patterns from the folk song, Lightly Row, and I'll link that at the end of this video. Second is my course, Play and Sing in Harmony, where you'll use songs to explore major and minor tonality and learn to use tonic and dominant chords to play songs and improvise. Click the link in the description to sign up at my website for more information. In the meantime, sing far from home, sing Lightly Row, Sing anything and everything, and then take it to the piano. Tonal patterns. Bum, bum. Bum, bum. Bum, bum. Bum, bum. La, do. La, do. T, re. T, re. Uh.